All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to another episode of We Create Music. Today we have an extraordinary guest, producer, Mr. Mark Bird. What's happening? What's happening? I'm so glad you joined us today. Pleasure, man. Pleasure Thanks sitting down me. with you. Absolutely, Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. So I'm just going to jump right into, into the question. Now, I know you probably ask this question every time you do an interview, so I'm going to ask it differently. Okay, so we all know you started off as an artist. Right. Yeah, 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 we know that you got into production based um, by your uncle, right? Yeah, yeah. So, how what was some of the difficulties you experienced in transitioning from an artist into being a producer? Um, honestly, it wasn't really that difficult. It was more so like the the producer really came as like, okay, mm. I got tired of going to other people's studios. It's like that's not. I heard the beat you gave, homie. Like, you playing me this. this doesn't sound the same. All right, I'm going to just go make it. Go so, make it out. And so then it was just like, once I started producing, it was easy to fall back because I was, I'm a very selfless person. So it's mm. like, I would see, like, oh, okay, my homie kill this better than I would. Oh, you can have this. Oh, this, is, this fits you. Okay, you can mm-hmm. have it. And this is like, Oh, so now I'm putting the songs together. So it's like mm. now I'm producing. So then it was okay. like it was really easy to just okay. fall out of the artist seat. It was like the most easy transition ever. Mm. It's like I just phased out. Are there times when you wish you could go back and be an artist? Nah, nah, um, nah because I like. I mean, I still write from time to time, mm-hmm. um, but that made me a better producer. So I write for other artists. So nine times okay. out of 10 when I make a record, it, it already has a hook, mm. maybe a verse. I might demo the whole song. Here you go. Okay. Just take what you like. But um, nah, I feel like being an artist was limited. Mm. You kind of stuck to your genre. Okay. As a producer, I can, you can be in any genre you, you want. Be. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, that kind of makes sense, you know, so it's kind of the more freedom that lives in the realm of production as being a producer versus kind of just being a rapper or a singer, right? Yeah. And so you can be anything you want to be as a producer. I can produce country, hip hop, pop. Exactly. I can fuse genres together. That's right. Versus I'll rap. So I'll always be a rapper. So you'll always be a rapper. That's right. So I know you're part of the freshman. Yeah. So talk about this. Your brother. So talk about that experience and then really the experience of being within a production team and what were some of the challenges and barriers that you experienced? Um, the greatest thing about it was it taught collaboration. Mm. Um, challenges? I'd say our biggest challenge is, is it was four of us. So everybody had their own direction for the record. So, I mean, we just saw it one easy way. We, did it all four ways and listen back to it like okay that's the best one all right we're just gonna roll with that one um working in a group you you have to leave your ego at the door mm. so like you have to trust your brothers so if there's three other people in a group and they tell me that this ain't it mm-hmm. it might not be it sometimes it is but more than likely three other mm-hmm. people won't be wrong so check your ego at the door um but like I say, the hardest challenge is like everybody has a vision for the record. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to try four different ways. So how, do, so how do you get over that? How do you get over the ego? Um, is I feel like it's natural. Like if you really want to get better, you got to still sharp and still. Mm-hmm. So if you're around people that do something better than you, like my brothers, they did things better than I did. Mm-hmm. I, I did this. Mac did this, Jay did this, E did that. So when it came to listening to them, they're mm-hmm. listening to it from their point of view. So this is like, ah, uh, so maybe if I keep doing what I'm doing, but take what Mac said to do, hmm. take what Jay said to do, and take what E said to do, then it becomes a record that nobody can deny. Hmm. So it's easy to check your ego when you want to be better. You know, I think that's kind of one of the most difficult things for producers to do today 
is kind of check that ego in order to be able to effectively collaborate with, with others. And so I know even from my own personal experience that sometimes can be a hindrance to people really churning out great music together kind of can kind of be the different vision that people have mm -hmm. and the ego can kind of get in the way yeah. also with that. So I do want to ask, are the freshmen still together or? Uh, no, we, we disbanded. Um, everybody just had different paths mm. and it was, it's no, no hardship. No, like when I tell you, these is my brothers. We literally talk every single day. That's good. Nothing changes. Um, everybody just saw their own path and where mm. they wanted to go, but we support each other in that path. So with that being said, if Mac has a record that he's working mm -hmm. on, he'll send it like, y'all need your ear on this. Okay, cool. You should do X, Y. Well, send me the session. I'll do it. Boom, boom, boom. Or if I'm working on something, I'll send it to Mac and Jay. Like, what y'all think? Mac can be like, yo, we should change this. All right, cool. You go ahead and do it. Then. Mm. Um, working on projects for other artists, mm -hmm. I still bring Jay in to mix the project for me. Like, okay. We just, we just went different paths, but all of us, we still collaborate together. That That's never good. changes. That's good. Yeah. Absolutely. So let me ask you, so what has been some of the, the biggest challenges or the most pivotal moment in your career that kind of changed your trajectory? Um, man, I'll say some of my most pivotal moments in turn became biggest, my biggest challenges. Mm. Um, the luck or what, whatever they have it be. Mm -hmm. I'll say, okay, so you see the guys that put in 100 mm -hmm. to 300 placements before they get to the big fish. Mm -hmm. right. For me, it seemed weird because if people follow me, you'll see joint here, mm -hmm. joint there, joint over there, mm -hmm. get a little quiet. Boom, Kanye plays me. Like, God, like, like yeah. it just happened. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, as big as it can be. Like, mm -hmm. when you think about it, like, realistically, it's like, as great as it was for me, you can you can say what you want. Ye will still top five in the music industry. Like, of all, like, of right all. now, like, yeah. he's one of the top five artists. Mm -hmm. So to hit that top five so early, mm -hmm. The challenge became everybody is like, so when's the next Rick Ye record? Mm -hmm. It's like they're looking at you and it's like, it's almost like, yeah, all that's cool, but what about another mm -hmm. Ye record or the the other four people that's in the top five? It's like, damn, so nothing else I was putting up matters. Yeah. So that became the challenge. Mm -hmm. Like and, and it became a challenge because of the level of expectation that people now had. Yeah, like based upon how like kind of how quick it happened. Yeah, okay. like I went to, I remember, it's a true story, um, right after Pablo, so what happens is once you get placed on like something that major, mm -hmm. publishers call the credits, and they gonna come find you to for a pub deal. Mm -hmm. So I went into meetings, and I remember having a meeting with somebody, not gonna say who, and I remember telling them, they were like, so you got another yay record coming? I'm like, well, you know, always working, mm -hmm. you just never know it's gonna hit. And I was like, but I do have and I lined up my my joint. I'm like, yeah, I got 20 records coming next year. Mm. And they didn't even care about the pipeline. All they cared about was the year oh, record. The next year, I actually put up 29 records. Mm. And they were like, but nobody cared. Wow. So it's the expectation. It's like, if you're not hitting a certain mm -hmm. joint, then it's, it became a little weird. Wow. So. Yeah, that had to be weird <laughs> yeah. for the, for you to have such a, a wide catalog of music out there, but they were only so concerned about, hey, when's the next Ray, uh, the next Yay album coming? Mm -hmm. Like, wow. <coughs> oh, bless you. Excuse me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, I of course, we connected a long time ago. Um, I think the first time we actually connected was at an iStandard event. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I actually remember you speaking at the event, and <laughs> it was funny because you was like, uh, you were saying something about kindred spirit, and I was like, "Yeah, kindred spirit, right?" And 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 that kind of how we start to to kind of form that uh, type of relationship right. uh, as well. Um, and so I've been following you for for a while, and so there are two phrases that I kind of know that you uh, that kind of stuck, and are kind of like your your theme 
Uh, the first is uh, I deserve it. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that. Where, where did that originate from, and why is that kind of like your theme today? Um, it started with working out. Actually, mm. I was like much heavier when we first moved to Atlanta doing music. I, I think I hit my heaviest. So I was like two sixty five, two seventy. Mm. So the process of working out was hard initially because okay. it was something that was foreign. So to motivate myself, like after every workout, I would tell myself I deserve it. I deserve mm. to work out. I deserve to treat myself good. Then I just started thinking about like, man, every day I wake up, it would be the first thing I would say. Mm. First thing I would post to like, people who was paying attention. It would be like six, seven in the mm. morning, like every morning, like, boom. It was the first thing. It's like now I deserve everything that I'm supposed to get because I believe in it and I'm working towards it. Mm -hmm. So that's why it just became the everyday model. Okay. So it's like in anything you think about, you're like, man, I put the work in for this. Mm -hmm. I had the faith to do this. Yeah, I deserve it. Yeah, because I, I absolutely see it as a consistent message on your uh, Instagram. Yeah. And people gravitate towards it. I mean, I, I will look at it and I will see tons of comments about I deserve and how it's an inspiration to others as well. So uh, I think that is one of the biggest themes that people can gravitate towards is that I deserve it. So the second one is the one you got right now, the one that you're rocking today, uh, God level. Right. So talk a little bit about that. Oh, um, man, it, it's a state of mind. Um, it's really just like where you mentally exist. Like, do you do you? The, the word exists. Mm -hmm. Do you exist or do you live? Mm -hmm. There's a huge difference between the two. So, and so that being said, the the actual definition for God level, which people will start seeing very soon, I'll give it to you now, is the gods don't live like the slaves. The gods don't live like the slaves. Mentally. Mm -hmm. Spiritually. You, you can't shackle a god. As you can shock a slave. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's the mentality. Mentality. I was going to say that. It's the mentality. It's the mentality. That's right. I mean, when you reach God level, it really doesn't matter what's going on around you. You know mm -hmm. in your heart and your soul that you're going to prosper through it. So you always stay above it. You don't even come down to mm -hmm. it. Like you can be in the middle of the worst storm. But when you're at God level, you don't even, it doesn't phase you because you know that mm -hmm. this is not. This is not mine. Mm. This is not where I'm supposed to be. I just got to walk through it right now. That's right. Yeah, you know, that's a very key insight because you can think it in your head and what you think really can turn into like your habits mm -hmm. and then your habits can turn into behaviors, right? And so kind of how you think about it, and I love the phrase, what you said is that every morning I wake up thinking I deserve it, I deserve it because then that turns into habits, things that you do on it, uh, that you do that kind of reflect that, that I deserve it. But even in this case, the God level mentality. And that's why it became the name of the production company as well as the production right. team, because it's like, we set a standard for mm. ourselves. This is the standard. Standard. So like, subconsciously when I'm making music, if it doesn't sound like this, mm. it, it never gets sent out. Wow. Okay, so that's, that's very interesting. If it hasn't hit that level where I can be like, okay, or 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 we can be like, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. It'll never, it'll never see the light of day. See the light of day. <laughs> see the light of day. Uh, so you know, I know you're absolutely into like the physical health and and running and exercising and ensuring that uh, you maintain your 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 physical body. So how does even from a mentality perspective, how do those things kind of help you stay focused? Oh, um, man, honestly, like working out or running, running became my therapy. Mm. Like my thing with running is it would be the first thing I do. So like I, I would get up like how most people had a morning routine. Yep. Yep. This is my morning routine. Like whenever you see me post a running photo, mm -hmm. this is how it happens. It's usually I get up, I brush my teeth and I go run. Mm. I don't eat. I don't drink. I don't talk, I literally go run. It's the very first thing that I do. I might drive 20 minutes just to go to a trail mm -hmm. and just run. 
And the thought process behind it all is like when you're running, you see other runners, you see couples walking together, mm -hmm. you see animals, you see people commuting, you see, you see life personified. Mm -hmm. It's it's almost impossible to have a bad day after seeing <laughs> that much life in action. So once that's done, it's just like, man, I just mm -hmm. I just saw so much stuff to motivate me. Let me go be productive. Mm -hmm. That's that's it. So the very first thing you do is ensure that in some way you you're connected and ensuring that as soon as you wake up that you are doing something that kind of sets the tone and the mood. Mm -hmm. And then from there you kind you of take all day. You just do the whole day down like you mm -hmm. you started off right. Like boom, okay, cool. The run is done. Lunch is done. Mm -hmm. Especially now we get the Apple Watch. Like okay, I don't already <laughs> hit my, I don't already hit my move goal, my exercise goal, and it's only ten thirty. I'm I'm trying to see what I can do the rest right. of the day. Right. Absolutely. So let's talk about personal sacrifices. So what are some of the things that you personally had to either sacrifice or overcome to get to where you are today? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything. No, like every every single aspect. Mm. Family, friends, time with my children, relationships, mm -hmm. anything monetarily from equipment to cars to everything. Everything. You're gonna lose it. Mm. At some point, if you really if you really like grinding it out. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, man. A lot of people turn around before they see the breakthrough. Mm. They let the breakdown break them all the way down to the point they don't make it to the breakthrough. Mm. Nah, man. I I saw it different. I saw it even to this day. Like, you know, life is all about valleys and peaks. You're going to be up, you're going to be down, but you have to see it so far ahead that that valley is simply just another stepping stone mm. to get back to the peak. Do you think in today's culture, that mentality happens in that way? Um, sometimes. I won't say it's foreign, but in a lot of cases, um, we're in the culture now is, is very microwave. Mm -hmm. So... Everybody wants the instant, the instant gratification. Right. Like, okay, I make twenty beats, I should be a millionaire. Right. It's like, nah, bro. Like, do you even understand what it takes to get a number one record? Mm. Like, everything has to line up. Just because the record is great, yeah, and the writing was great, and the artist cut it great, and the beat was great. What if the marketing is off? Mm. What if the management is off? What if the label is mm -hmm. on? Like everything, like, Doug, the stars have to line up. The marketing has to be on point. The label, the mixing, the mastering, the producing, the writing, mm -hmm. everything has to be right. Even mm -hmm. down to the artist, the timing has to be right. Their personality has so much stuff has to line up mm -hmm. for you to get that big record. Like nobody thinks about every little component that goes into that. So with that being said, Man, keep working until you get it. Right. That's the luxury of this stuff. Like, man, most of us have the access to make music at any time that we want mm -hmm. to. If you can only do it once, you're really not that good. So just keep doing it. Yeah, so many people kind of give up before they go, kind of like we said with the microwave society. They kind of go, okay, I made all these beats now. I should be kind of a millionaire. Oh, I should have a hit record. Oh, it didn't happen. Oh, it didn't happen. Time. Oh, man, forget that. I don't want to do this now. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me of the, the, the picture that I've kind of seen on Instagram of the old man. He has the, the pick. Oh, the pick. And, and it's like, like all the diamonds, diamonds yeah. over there. Yeah. And he's like, ah. Oh. He and just he stops right before the breakthrough. Right. And the next old man is like, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going and trying to get the actual diamonds. And I think that's, so let me say it this way. Do you think the culture today kind of sets that as a, a stigma today that with the way that social media is that, oh, yeah, you can just put out a make be in a studio, make a beat and boom, you kind of you kind of on now. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, the way the social media and everything else works, it can, it can definitely give that impression mm -hmm. and that stigma that 
okay, cool. I got 20,000 followers. I should be popping. I should be popping. Like, nah, bro. I know people with two, 300 followers that got more money than everybody <laughs> in the room that I know. <laughs> but it's just like, it's how you work it. Mm -hmm. Like, I just seen something crazy on social media or some girl, she was, she started a brand or she was branding some mm -hmm. merchandise. And she was supposed to sell like 250 pieces of merch or whatever. This girl has 2.6 million followers and couldn't move 250 pieces of merch. Mm. So, just, wow. That, that, I mean, it. <laughs> so the number of followers really nah. is not equating to the ability to kind Man, of look. engage or move things with, with people. What would you rather have? 2 million followers with 1% support? Or two hundred thousand followers with a hundred percent support. Yeah, yeah. two hundred thousand followers. I, I mean, yeah, that's just a simple because the the latter yeah. is actually doing. You can engage in movement, and, and that's the thing. Like a lot of people don't understand. You can, you can be cool doing what you do. Mm -hmm. You can be really chill doing what you do. And nobody really would know. I mean, there's tons of people out here that's doing a lot of different things mm -hmm. that most that are really under the radar mm -hmm. that most people don't know. But as soon as they find it, they go, "Oh, that was you. that was you." I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, because I think just from a social media perspective, most people kind of have that. They put on airs or that facade, and like, yeah. "Oh, I'm, I made it. I'm up here at this level, and I'm making. I'm, I'm, I'm big time." When the reality is like wow, and that's why I like with social media, I'm, I, I I let people see what I feel like they should mm -hmm. see as far as like motivation goes, but the day to day is the stuff that you'd be like, oh word, you do all that mm -hmm. in one day, but yeah, you talk to that many people in a day, yeah, I send that many emails a day, I mix these many records a day, I do yeah, wow, and it ain't about social media for me. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's cool. But a lot of people like to put on the. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather do it in real life. I'd rather do it in real life. That's right. So I am going to bring up something because we've had many talks about your um, endeavor to provide educational opportunities to people. So I'm going to ask so, so kind of where, did, where does that stand? Uh, you're talking about as far as like classes yeah. and everything? Yep. Um, Coming sooner than y'all think. Uh oh, I'm excited about that. <laughs> I like that. Uh oh, it's <laughs> man. All I'm gonna say is, um, seriously though, um, there'll be classes coming soon. Mm. It's gonna be actual producer and writer camps that I'm putting on, and the guy level team is putting on for artists that we're working mm -hmm. with. It's about to get real fun. I'm glad. Like, yeah, yeah. No, we talked about it many times. Oh no, this this it's, tur it's turning into something yeah. crazy. I I've been sitting back and the thing that I've been doing is actually getting everything in place. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to just put on a camp. I want I want people to really get the the bang for their buck. I mm -hmm. want people to get the best for it. Like I'm not one of those guys that would just tell you to pay me to do something. No, man, I got to make sure that. I'm giving you exactly what you mm -hmm. need before I, I won't be satisfied if I just tell you to pay me X amount of dollars and you leave and you don't have everything yeah, that you yeah. need. So wow. and I wanted to make sure I did it right, like mm -hmm. even down to like sponsors and everything else. Absolutely. So it has to be what, excellence. Mm -hmm. God level. God level. That's, God level, that's right. God level. Okay, so that's absolutely great to hear that that type of Enterprise is coming. Mm -hmm. I think that's, you know, like I said, we talked about it many times before. So now I would say, if you need help with anything, just always just let me know. You know, Perfect. I'm there. I got you. Absolutely. But I think you said some key is that you don't want people just to come and pay you money just to say, hey, yeah, and, and, and leave without really having the, the knowledge or experience or um, context that they really need. Right. Because you see so many, and, and of course, not to name any names, but you see so many different things that happen within the, the music industry. And sometimes it seems like, oh, yeah. oh well, no, I, no, let, no. let me just get your money. Yeah. And hey. I'll really give you come the tools. Come for $500. Either to come perform or play your music or, or whatever it may be to yeah. say, yeah, well, we're going to kind of give you some content, but you're not really going to leave with the knowledge that you really should that's going to help you 
that's going to help further you along within the industry. And I think that is something that's truly needed that people really, really want to look for. Because I know yeah. sometimes you ask people, I, I was I was at a, uh, the ASCAP Expo a couple of years ago and on the panel they had music, uh, music supervisors up there. And we asked one of the ladies specifically, how do you go about finding music and what types of music? Like, and she really couldn't, she circled around the entire answer to the point where she almost got booed by the audience. We were like, Wow. And that's because a lot of people like to keep all the things themselves that really kind of sharing that with, with everyone else. Do you kind of see that as something that happens today is that there's a lot of hogging of information and not enough sharing and collaboration? Um, I think today is starting to be an industry of people that share. Mm. Just because it's like also with social media, the internet and everything, it's kind of hard to hide anything these days. It was like, I really, I love it. Like, mm -hmm. I love it. It's almost like we have a silent union of sorts. Mm. This is like, because if somebody do something bad to one and that person jumps on Twitter and makes one tweet mm -hmm. and this person retweets, that person retweets, mm -hmm. this person retweets, not a whole industry. No, we're not dealing with you because you did homie wrong and homie is one of us. Mm. So now we cool. No business. Right. So I think is I think it's becoming a place where we we really share those type of things because I think even more so than just the music as people we're getting to a place to where we just want to see people mm -hmm. as a whole better so we do whatever we can to help any and everybody that we can mm. I, I I found it that a lot of the guys that have that old mentality were guys that they've been getting that done to their whole life. So they think that that's the right way to do mm -hmm. business. So they do it the same way. Like one of the goals for me and my team was to do things so righteous that it makes you question anybody that you've ever dealt with to the point to where it's like, why was your business not that great? Wow. So that's like, that's the whole thing. That's like really anybody that we even work with, mm -hmm. like hence you don't, you don't see a bunch of people under the guy level umbrella. Not that I don't think people fit under the guy level umbrella. Mm -hmm. I don't want to bring anybody over without being able to give them something mm -hmm. that makes sense for them to be with me and not with somebody else. Right. So wow. until I can do that, I'll just keep collaborating with people and keep giving them every gem that I can give them because more to sell than that, I just want to see people win. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's good. Yeah, I think I saw you post that. Uh, what's today? It was last night. Oh, last night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just, I was just scrolling, and I was just seeing how many. I got sidetracked because I was scrolling, mm -hmm. and then I jumped on the phone, and I'm texting so many people like, "Yo, bro, congrats! Yo, my G, congrats! Yo, I'm proud of you!" Like, I was like, "Man, I could take the whole day and just shout out my homies." <laughs> but it's like I'm in the crib and I'm happy. Like, oh, that's good. Was such a such a and I'm excited for them like it's my win mm -hmm. because it's just I just want to see people do great. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. So speaking of gems, so what would be some of the things that you've learned that you feel other people uh, would need to know in order to help them be successful within this business? Um, man, one of the most important things I learned is, especially for producers, like. I'm just giving it to y'all real, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it's impossible to get to a top tier artist because it's, it's, it's starting to get easier than ever. Mm -hmm. You send the right email on the right day and you out of here. Right. But more so than that, if you're really looking to build a legacy, I mean, it's cool to get a placement here, a placement there, a placement here. But man, when are you going to do that great thing mm -hmm. and create something? Create. You have to create the legacy. Mm -hmm. Your legacy can't start with everybody else's. You know what I'm saying? Create, create a legacy. So if anybody who follows me knows, I've been quiet musically mm -hmm. for a reason. And creating a legacy. I had an artist under my belt. Mm. That's all I care about. Right. That's what it's about, man. Create your legacy. However you see it fit. That is how 
you imprint everything that you are. Mm. You have to let people see everything about you. Like, like I say, it's nothing wrong with that one record because that one record is great. But most of us aren't just the one record. Right. Most of us are a plethora of stuff. Mm -hmm. You have your, your own way that you hear music. Mm -hmm. How is the world going to understand how you hear music unless you create that thing? Mm. Be it you putting out an incredible instrumental project or most of us are, that are producers are artists in our first right. Mm -hmm. Man, make an album that is about how you hear music. That's going to last. Because people are always going to come back to it. Mm -hmm. That's, think about the greats, bro. Timbaland had to find artists that were able to convey how he heard mm -hmm. music. For real. Yay. Just Blaze, Dr. Dre, Quincy Jones, Teddy Riley. Mm -hmm. You name the great Rick Rubin. The greatest producers of all time had to create bodies of work to show people what they are. Mm. Man, create that legacy. Create that legacy. Create, I think that's one of the big, I, I like that message, create that legacy. Create that legacy. Absolutely. So I, I, I was gonna ask you what projects you're working on, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know if you can really talk about any of those or- I mean, you know, what you got cooking at home. Um, God Level has an artist called Dante Higgins from Houston. Nice. Um. Yeah, that's pretty. I'll say this. Uh, whenever people, you know, this is the first artist I've decided to actually stand by and put it mm. all on the line for. Mm. So that should say. So he has to be. That should tell you everything about him. I'm talking about I put it all on the line for him. Yeah. At this point in my career, it's not much that anybody can pay me to not do what we're doing. So like, like if you call and it's like, yo, I need you. But if I'm doing this, mm -hmm. you got to wait. I don't care who you are. Because this is my legacy. This is your legacy. You can't pay me enough to cheat on my legacy. Mm. It's so funny because I think so many people cheat on their legacies every day. I'm not doing it. I've done it for so every many day. years of my life. I'm not doing it. I'm, I I'm, I'm focused on building that great thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think they compromise too easy. And they give in too easy. Well, we'll give you this. Oh, well, I can use that money. Yeah. Man, yeah, I don't care about that. Yeah, sure, I could go sign right now for a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> and I people could, would jump on but it. But I could wait another six, seven months, maybe a year, and be worth about two to three million. Mm, I'm gonna wait. Mm. I ain't, I ain't no, I ain't no stranger to struggle. I ain't afraid to go in the trenches. But do you think that type of mentality happens because you are, you've been in the game for so long or as a new person coming in, they see, oh, 100,000, yeah, I want to sign right now. I mean, even more than being in the game, this is life. Mm. I ain't a, I, I'm no stranger to the struggle of life. And with that being said, man, once you know your worth, then you know that struggling is beneath you, but it's part of it. It's part of the process. It's inevitable. You have to go through it. I think we're in a generation where people don't like to struggle. You ain't got to like and, it. And as soon as they struggle, it's, oh, no. Okay. That's the thing. The uncomfort is supposed to make you great. Mm. Greatness comes from uncomfortable and desperate places. Name somebody that's always had it great that has done something super great on top of that. No, everybody comes. Everybody that has kind of achieved at that that level has all gone through. Whether it's m major things in that person's life or their family, struggles, sacrifices, in order for them to achieve something great, they had to go through. Exactly, they had to go through it. So, with that being said, then why are everybody so afraid to struggle? If you want, because it feel it doesn't feel good. Yeah. Struggle doesn't feel good. No, I don't. You know, we it's want just the, like working out, though. It don't feel good really don't, when you're doing it. That really don't feel good. It don't feel good when you're doing it, but you love the results. Right, you love the results. And and I think that goes back uh, to the microwave society, uh, is that we want it so fast. You know, and you, look, I'm, I'm trained for this. We can do it. Because mm -hmm. I know what I'm worth. 
Like, if somebody told me right now, like, yo, bird, you're going to have to struggle for, like, two more years, and you're going to be where you need to be at, where we going? Mm. Where y'all want to do the training at? You know? We're going to struggle here. We're going to struggle in the desert. Where we struggling mm. at? I'm book my ticket. We going. I ain't, I ain't scared of it. I ain't scared of it. It's good. That's the bounce back, man. It's good. Like, it's good. It can be good. It can be, man, what? Strike is good. Oh, we know we gotta we know we gotta put it down, man. Let's go. Let's go to the store. We're gonna stock up. We're gonna eat oodles and noodles and we're gonna run every single day to make sure that we don't get get out of shape from eating this unhealthy food. But we about to grind. Right, but you're building yourself up to be able to endure through yeah. that process as well. Hey I man, I like seriously, like I've I've been in a place of focus just even before coming here. Like before coming here, bro, I hadn't really came outside in like three three weeks or something. Hmm. Man, the career working. No haircut, no nothing, no car wash. Like man, I ain't even, <laughs> I ain't even care what my clothes look like. I'm out here with seven different shades of neon on. Like I don't what I'm working. I ain't care nothing about no appearance right now. I was like, okay, I might be on camera. Let me go at least get a line. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the least I can do for this. I well, appreciate that absolutely. Yeah. So where can people find you? Man, um, everything. Uh, I am Mark Bird. Uh, that's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, email. I'm, I'm really easy to find. Everything is I am Mark Bird. I am Mark Bird. Well, Mark, man, it's been a pleasure. Man, thanks for having me, man. Anytime, man. Y'all gotta absolutely. get y'all gotta get my partner in here, man. I yes, sir. Partner, my God level partner. Oh yeah, absolutely. Let's make that happen. Charity. Really? Yeah, man. That's the other name, Charity. That's the other have a God level, brother. Woo. Oh no, I know. Oh no, 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 no. no. Maybe I don't. But, but no, you ain't heard this. Mm. Ain't nobody heard this yet. Mm -mm. It's crazy. I believe it. It's crazy. I didn't, I didn't know Charity was the was the other partner, but I do know how dope she is though. It's crazy. Yeah. It's scary. Yep. Yep. Brothers, absolutely a pleasure. Man, and of course I tell you, if you if you ever need some assistance, some help. I got you. I'm gonna be hitting you for real. Cause Hit me up. These classes and these, this is about to go. Yep. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. My guy. My guy, absolutely. Yeah. All right.